Hello and welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast. <laughs> Where's Jamie? Come it. back. <laughs> oh, if you hadn't gathered already, we're without our host with the most, Anne Lindsay Smith. So Mossy and I are flying solo this week. Mossy, you prepared? You ready? Seamless, Al. It'll be seamless. <laughs> We're going to have a look at Pro 14 action from the weekend, have a look back at Edinburgh and Glasgow and I suppose the permutations really about uh, the remaining fixtures in, in terms of qualification for the knockout stages but the, the main cracks and the main focus of today will be uh, the European quarterfinals at the weekend. We'll be joined by Grant Gilchrist, have a look at the Edinburgh preview, Edinburgh Munster obviously here at BT Murrayfield uh, and hopefully Xander Fagerson will join us on the phone after training uh, for the Glasgow Saracens preview. Two massive games, two brilliant games of Scottish rugby. So we'll get into those uh, in a wee while, but we'll start with Pro 14. And you were doing comms on Friday night for the Edinburgh game, and I likewise was doing comms on the, on Saturday for the Glasgow game, so we should be fairly up to speed with everything. And I start with the Edinburgh game. Uh, big result for them, um, they needed it. Yeah, big result. Bonus point victory against Leinster, who are 22 points, or they were 22 points clear uh, at the top of the conference. Um, really important game for Edinburgh, really important that the, they had to win not only did they win they picked up a bonus point uh, 28 points to 11 um, they fell behind early on actually Leinster got an 8-0 lead Leinster had uh, a few changes but they still had a, a pretty strong side the guys like Dan Levy coming at the back row Joe Tamani in, in the centre Jack McGrath on the, uh, on the bench a, a three test lines uh, prop uh, Sean Cronin starting so it was a it was a mixed Leinster team but a mixed Leinster team that's steamrolled everybody else really so far and uh in the league campaign so Edinburgh were uh, they fell behind but their pack were just exceptional uh, their set piece lost one or two lines but that aside the the, the scrum the, the pick and go uh, the line out was, uh, was what set the platform the backs didn't see a huge amount of possession <laughs> in all honesty um, <laughs> but you can't argue a five point uh, bonus point went at home well that's exactly what Richard Cockrell said after the game didn't he he said um, he, didn't, he didn't really mind where it was ugly or where it was pretty it was, it was five points at home he didn't have the, the luxury of resting as many guys off the back of the, the Guinness Six Nations as possibly Dave Rennie did a wee bit further west, but he did have the opportunity to bring back John Barkley uh, for his debut in an Edinburgh shot and Matt Scott after being about four months out of concussion mm. issues as well, who both played exceptionally well and both contributed massively, which we'll, we'll come on to, which will make it difficult for selection moving into to this week. The back row is strong, isn't it? For, uh, for most teams have a strong back row. The, most teams have got a, a big number of back rows to choose from because it's such an attritional position. It tends to be, you know, a lot of, uh, physical demands in the back rows, and you do pick up knocks and bumps. But if you get them all fit at the same time, you've got a, you've got a big problem. So we'll look ahead to that, uh, as you say, Al. Maybe the, what the Edinburgh back row may look like against Munster. But John was outstanding, especially in the opening. 15, 20 minutes where Edinburgh were up against it and don't forget he's been out for almost a year um, and you could see all the, the aggression and desperation that's built up through months on the sidelines when Edinburgh needed him or they needed somebody to step up early on John did that, he carried really hard he, he, he flew off line uh, defensively and made some, some really good tackles uh, on his own terms and you think actually if you're looking to almost like I, I don't know like crawl yourself into a game after being out for so long or get yourself in, break yourself in gently he didn't do that, he flew off a bit his battle colleagues were brilliant, Hamish was outstanding again front five were brilliant, Fordy played well got a try a wee um, try for Fordy in the Fordy corner, yeah, exactly. you, you, you confident he got it down in comms? Uh, well, on the, the first view yeah, on the second view no he did actually, he did do a, uh, uh, got through the scrum half and grass tackle and, and got it down, similar to Sean Cronin scored one, his opposite number scored the, the first try from a driving mall so it was, a, it was a night for the front rows, WP and L got a try it was a night for the purists it definitely was and uh, you mentioned try. John Barker there, one, one very impressive thing was the way he hit the ball so hard at times Edinburgh yeah. players were standing static waiting to coming out from Henry and John went flying through and, and got momentum every single time he also looked fit I mean he looked grumpy well, we had him on a couple of weeks ago grumpy when he got <laughs> taken off but he was only off for a small period and then came back on so he, he must have played close to 75 minutes but that's what I mean he looked fit um, and then early on where it, if you haven't been involved you know it's like he's been off for a couple of weeks or trying to get matched fitness or trying to get up to speed is sometimes quite difficult, he, he hit the ground running um, it's interesting to say that he hit the ball real hard when he was attacking but he was actually hitting the ball real late so he was it was two or three times, I, don't, I, I assume it was planned but it was almost coming round the corner taking the ball off nine but just that little bit later so once the defence were, were set they didn't see him coming and he made two or three really good intrusions in the second half that actually led to the, the phase that led to Fordy's try from the line out so 
Yeah, he'll be pleased with his work. He's got a big job to retain his place because of the quality in that back row with Jamie Ritchie and Hamish Watson and Magnus Bradbury, and Bill Matter. As well, you say, there's a, there's a few to choose from. Well, we, we might as well talk about it now because it's probably not one we'll touch on with Grant. But you look at that back row, look at selection from Richard Cockrell's point of view. The, the strongest team, the strongest Edinburgh team, it's reasonably clear who's going to play in each position. They're going to miss Blair King on, obviously, massively at mm-hmm. full back. Dougie Fife did well at the weekend back row wise uh, for me Hamish Watson and Bill Matter start and mm-hmm. then you've got a debate if you've got let's assume everybody's fit you've got Jamie Ritchie potentially coming back in you mentioned Magnus Bradbury and John Barkley um, amongst others where, where mm-hmm. do you go with that? Uh, I think you're at a stage now with the, the quality of the squad that, that Edinburgh have and indeed Glasgow have is you're now in the realm something that was totally alien to us when we played but you're in the realms of picking the right player for the right fixture um, so I think a lot will depend on, on what Munster do, how they play the game and it's not a reactive way of thinking, it's just actually if you've got um, five or six equally brilliant back row players, who's best suited for the opposition uh, in terms of offensively and defensive, so so I think Munster are, are fairly attritional um, as we know Bill, I would agree Bill Matter has to start, it's probably one of the world's best number eight. He's been brilliant in Europe as well. Uh, we think the impact he made in Toulon and against McPelly, some of this performance is just incredible. He's so a, he's a, he's he a game changer, play. isn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we talk I, about Edinburgh having to you know, be attritional, win, win, win that physicality battle, but he can do something different as well. He so. can, and he's shown, he's shown it time and time again. Um, so he starts, uh, for me, Hamish Watson starts as well. Um, because his he, his ability to break the line, his work rate, is another outstanding player, and I think uh, uh, <laughs> it's not easy, I, I, is it? it isn't easy because you go he, look what uh, Magnus brings, look what Jamie Rich, how did well Jamie Ritchie played in Six Nations, incredible. Well, for me, for me, he was Scotland's fit, best best player during, yeah. the, during the Six Nations. Um, but, fit, fit, but then, but then I'm, I'm probably going to contradict. Good job, I know select it, Tim Eden. <laughs> The other thing about knockout rugby and champion, um, Champions Cup quarterfinals, you need that now, so that decision making, that leadership, that you know, the slight pressure on the referee at times, and that understanding. And John Bartley brings you that above everyone else. Um, I would, I would, You'd lean towards I, I would John. Go, I would go the same as last weekend. Yeah, Bill Matter, Hamish Watson, John Bartley. Yeah, I think to your point. That- John played so well at the weekend. Did you pick him for man of the match? By the way, so he was selected. Was that your uh, choice? It was part of the panel. At part, of, part of the selection panel. <laughs> uh, he's played so well that he puts his hand up. Now, if he uh, stumbled his way to his first game back after ten months, which you know would be completely acceptable, uh, then it's probably an easier decision for Richard Cockrell to make. But you know, he's played that well that he's, he's instantly saying, "You know, I've got all the experience. I'm playing well. Here I'm. Here I am." Uh, and that's so the other guys. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's so it's difficult. Just, it's just as well we're not picking a it's team. It's so difficult, but it's a brilliant problem to have, um, and it it means that training this week becomes really important as well. Yeah, I, you know, for for as well as John did at the weekend, you'll have to back that at training, um, and if Jamie's training and Magnus and Luke Hamilton, if he's getting back fit, and obviously the other guys we've spoken about, you're in a good place if you're having to be detailed in your training in order to, to influence selection I think it's a really good problem to have and um, whoever they pick whoever three they go with whoever is on the bench will come on and make an impact you're, you're, you're going to be very strong uh, whichever uh, composition you go with well, Richard did get the opportunity to rest Joe McAnally and now that for certain players I think it, it helps him undoubtedly and for other players we had, I can't remember who was talking about maybe Ryan Wilson that was talking about it that at times it's difficult to have that week off and then come back and hit hit the ground running but Stuart's got enough experience he should be able to slot back straight back in I would imagine will stro- slot straight back in and, and play well this weekend yeah absolutely You'd, uh, as difficult as sometimes to have a week off it's actually uh, a really good thing as well when you play the, the number of minutes that, that uh, Rambo's played Stuart McAnally's played so he'll come in The again training becomes really important for him um, in terms of his, the calling the terminology and the the, the lineups will be different from, from Scotland's line it's something he's been focused entirely on for the last three months um, so extra wee sessions and, and, and small talk around the, the kind of hookers with the jumpers and the throwers just all working together will be important so it is a really important week at training but Ford did well uh, the scrum was exceptional on, on Friday night um, won a penalty try just before half time it was actually quite it was one of the, the key moments of the game really 
the uh, Leinster got up really well and stole Edinburgh's line out just 10 metres from the own line but because it deflected the ball back didn't pick it up properly they had to then touch it down over their own line so the reward for <laughs> getting up and winning a line yeah. of steel was having to defend a five metre scrum it happened to them twice in the game I think you talked about it in yeah it, just, it happened just after the game the one that the steel then knocked it on so actually ironically it gave Edinburgh two really good attacking platforms from, from really good defensive line of play so that's a risk and that's maybe another reason why teams don't always throw somebody up in the line to, to compete but well, they still put an awful lot of, of pressure on Edinburgh uh, line out Edinburgh Edinburgh will take the ball where it's on and that sounds like a really simple thing to say but if Edinburgh, if somebody gives them the front Edinburgh mm-hmm. will take it all the time and that maybe takes away from the attack at times but what Leinster did well was they showed them the hole and then they got up now they didn't Leinster probably didn't get the rewards they, they deserved on the back of it um, and as you say Edinburgh got a, a couple of opportunities to go forward yeah so, the, uh, the, and the, but you still have to take those opportunities you know that the absolutely. scrum has to be good it was three scrums later they got the penalty try that was in the stroke of half time and then four days try I think was in the 43rd or 44th minute just after half time and that then cemented the game and Edinburgh were, were disciplined they were detailed they had to, must have been about 70% territory in that second half so really good platform to beat a top team a top Irish team at Leinster ahead of another top Irish team coming in uh, on Saturday and they needed it they, they talk about uh, Edinburgh at the moment they're talking about the fact that every game is, is like a knockout game for them because they lose one in the league and it's going to be very very difficult to make those playoffs and obviously the quarter final coming up this weekend yeah they uh, they jumped up a space in the, and the conference B is so close well other than Leinster as we said already 72 points are flying high already guaranteed a home semi-final and then you've got two more qualification spots uh, between Ulster who are currently second in 54 Benetton in 50 Edinburgh on 47 and then Scarlet's on 45 so two of those four teams um, will join Leinster in qualification the big one for Edinburgh next after the, the European game is Scarlet's away so that's that's a huge game followed by Ulster at home and then Glasgow away so the two two of the the three teams that Edinburgh are directly competing with for that second spot you play in the next two games and then a big derby to finish. Glasgow, yeah, as I said, the, the comms for Glasgow, um, it's an interesting one because I don't think you learn a huge amount about looking ahead to Saracens because you're not going to play a team that's much different to Saracens than the Cheetahs. A very unstructured team. Uh, it's all about attack. Uh, when they attacked, they attacked well. I said, I think on Saturday night, Glasgow were good without being great. They did enough. Mm. Um, good to see, you know, Fraser Brown back out, getting a good run about. Xander Ferguson again, uh, getting a good amount of time which will position them on for next week but it, it wasn't it was a game that Glasgow were never going to lose um, as, soon as, as soon as you were kind of 20 minutes into the game there was there was no fear that Glasgow were going to lose that game um, but they probably didn't push on there Dave Rennie speaking about it after the game he was a bit frustrated I think that Glasgow got a little bit loose towards the end but it, I mean it was an entertaining game it was it yeah. was it was fun to watch um, I from a coaching point of view I think he, he and Kenny Murray in the defence will be slightly frustrated at times I actually see quite a lot of similarities in how Cheetahs try to attack in what Glasgow do. They're actually yeah. quite similar, but Glasgow are just much more accurate. Skill levels much higher. Yeah. Um, but if Cheetahs keep developing that and develop their skill level across their team, not just key individuals, they could have a pretty special attack. But their yeah. defence was was poor, and it and you know it was exposed by Glasgow's excellent attack and a couple of players. I think try scorers as well. Just uh, Kyle Stain scored that that try and Stafford McDowell. So your two midfield players who. Probably, I don't think many people would have had as their, their starting midfield in a, in a crucial Guinness Pro 14 fixture at the start of the season, coming and playing like that, surrounded by the experience, but actually delivering really good performances again, scoring cracking tries. Um, so you've got a bit of depth in that, I say depth in the Edinburgh back row, you've got depth in the, the Glasgow midfield as well. But I thought those two did really well, obviously led by Callum Gibbons getting a try, uh, Scott Cummins getting a try as well, Rory Hughes, slightly more experienced players, but, but Stafford and Kyle. Um, had a, a good run out in the midfield too. Yeah, Glasgow come off the back of a good kind of Six Nations period, nineteen out of twenty points, which better than anybody else in the league. Um, that gives them a huge amount of momentum going into going into not just that Cheetahs game, but into this quarter final as well. I think that from a, a selection point of view, as I say, there's a few guys that have come back from injury, either come back during the Six Nations period or, or post, that will, will help Dave Rennie in the latter part of the season. We saw last year though, he picked the players who'd been playing well for Glasgow. He didn't pick. Scotland players who were returning, um, he, he stuck with the guys that he knew were playing well, and a lot of those guys are the same guys that have gone on and taken the Scotland shot mm-hmm. this year. So, 
he's got a few interesting selection selections ahead of him. I think nine and ten being Creed. Does he does he stick with uh, Pete Horn, who played exceptionally well? Adam came on and got about ten minutes at the end as the game broke up and probably didn't break up the way that Dave Rennie would have liked it to. The, the game did open up at the end, wasn't it? it? Was the game was obviously won. There was a, there was a phase of defence just before, I think about 65, 70 minutes and. and Chris Vazaro came on and made about four tackles in the same in, 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 a, in, a, in a five phase defensive effort he made about four tackles and the one that did, he didn't make the tackle and he won the penalty it was right on Glasgow's own line yep. and even having that experience coming off and that really until that point the game although it felt one wasn't really I think there was only two scores in it at that point and the Cheetahs Max Wani and these guys they can score from anywhere really so, so even two tries with 15 12, 15 minutes to go yeah, the game should be won, but I thought Fazaro coming on and winning that penalty, making all those tackles, winning that penalty gave the the kind of the the win, and then it got a wee bit loose after that. I've got not written down here that <laughs> I'm saying cheetahs got loose. Twenty turnovers from the cheetahs and thirty missed tackles. Yeah. So I think, as you say, from a, a Glasgow coaching point of view, if that's the, the error rate that you the opposition have, you'd hope to have been a bit more comfortable, but the flip, job was done. Flip that on its head for next week. You, you talk about the Cheetahs attack being similar to Glasgow, I agree with that, but what what the Cheetahs do is they run out of options, and then yeah. they get to four or five, six phases, and then and they run out of options, and they don't threaten anymore. What Glasgow need to do this weekend is be able to attack all over the park, be able to threaten the Saracens' defence with more than just the wide wide. Ali Price down there in the group game mm -hmm. was picking and finding space. Now Saracens dealt better with him in the second half, but if Ali gets a nod, then he's got to be a threat from nine as well. And George is in there as well, George Horn. Yep. Uh, I don't think he was fit for selection last week. Um, it must be pretty close, but, but he'll play a similar game. Nick Frisbee obviously started at the weekend and and controlled it uh, to a reasonable expen extent with his experience. It's, it's fairly fairly sound in there, but you'd imagine it with George or, or Ali. And they both can play quite similar games, so they will test that size, that strong size defence around the edge. The only thing I'd say is you got so much success from Ali attacking that space, all those spaces in the final pool game that that'll heighten the Sari's defence, you know, because they, <laughs> they don't like getting broken. Uh, and there was a three tries in about twenty minute period, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, stemmed quite a lot from around there. So it's a it's not a big game of double bluff come the weekend as to where you do want to attack. But that's where you need the experienced players on the field, you know, with a with a plan of what you're trying to do and then executing it, whether it is round the edge or whether you are going wider or ultimately you'll have to play a kicking game against that press defence of Sarries as well yeah we spoke about Edinburgh's push for a, a playoff place in the, in the Guinness Pro 14 uh, Glasgow set top of Conference A out 66 points 3 points clear of Munster um, Connaughton 52 Cardiff with a 5 points at the weekend come to 52 as well so it's close at the top of Conference A Glasgow have Ulster at home and then Leinster away and then the derby against Edinburgh at Scotson so you would you would expect Glasgow to qualify, but that first space, that that top number one seed, gives you a home semi final. That's a target, undoubtedly. It's also about who you avoid. Uh, if you, <laughs> I mean, if you if you have to if you finish second and you you, you cross over and let's assume that Glasgow get that a uh, home playoff position and then and then lose, they think they've then got to go to Dublin. They've then mm -hmm. got to go and play Leinster in a semi final. Now that's mm -hmm. a tough, tough place to go. I mean, to win it, you've got to beat everybody. Yeah. But I think you'd probably rather pick them up in, in a final. There's some tennis premiership action as well. Uh, domestic action at the weekend. The premiership semi finals. Here, Melrose, uh, Melbury, and Heritage versus Curry. Uh, you know, see, I went, I went down to Golden Acre and saw um, about the the Heritage Curry game, which is actually really, uh, really physical. From Heritage, um, they won thirty-seven points to ten. Um, dominated up front, some real big ball cars, some real big scrums. Um, <laughs> it was a brilliant atmosphere. I don't know if there was a, a Heritage lunch on, but there was, there was a there was a, a rowdy bunch behind the post <laughs> at one end that had been enjoying their lunch, and it created a brilliant atmosphere. They had air horns, they had the uh, chants for the players, so it was it was a really good atmosphere. Um, and it worked. And it worked. It mm -hmm. worked. Heritage were physical. They were dominant. Um, and, and, and Carey had a, not a huge amount of possession but started to force the game a bit early um, but yeah Charlie Simpson with two tries for Heritage, Alex Ball, Jason Hill Rob Key hit a really nice line from a, a short play the, the, the inside centre that went through. Charlie Simpson with two tries I'm two surprised tries. I've not heard about that already Well we'll hear when we get back in the office I'm yeah. sure <laughs> but yeah, no Heritage congratulations to them and the, the other semi-final at Millbrae was 15-12 uh, to air 12-8 um, going into the final play 
the final few seconds and there was a penalty try for air um, that effectively decided the game just in the, the final play of the game so it was a it was a line out um, that Melrose were judged to have pulled down uh, and it was you know from the first defence straight under the post for a, a penalty try to air so you, they'll now you host you don't sound convinced about well, it well I had a look at it this morning on the on, on the footage um, it's hard I, I think the air were in camped in the 22 for the last however many minutes of the game it was really applying the pressure and Melrose's defence was really good they were disciplined they were chopping low they were popping back to your feet you could hear the chat through the ref's mic about their, their discipline and staying on side and the, 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 the penalty was for a, a dangerous tackle or a lift tackle uh, and I only saw it once and I deliberately didn't rewind and have a look again because it's no fair you know I mean yep. and, and, you know that the, there's no TMO at that uh, at the tennis premiership so it was up to the ref and I actually thought at the time um, it was Russell Anderson that made the tackle I thought it was a good tackle I didn't think it was a, a dangerous tackle he lifted the player off the ground but then drove him straight back I don't think it was horizontal did over you see, the horizontal when you talked about Fraser McKenzie's one at the weekend how did yeah, you see that I think they got that about right about right yeah, landed uh, on his shoulder uh, yeah I don't think landed his head or neck um, and it's it's a difficult one because there's two players involved so actually um, like the Samoa, Samoa game in the 2015 World Cup down in the well, testament now Al. yeah well it was a similar scenario where it, it, the player comes off the ground yeah, yeah well, you're right and, and was it was 40 it was Ross 40 yeah it was yeah. Mm. Uh, and it, if it wasn't for the second player engaging in that then it yeah. would it never have been dangerous so yeah, well, I, I agree I, I think they got about I, I think because Fraser lifted um, the legs was it Max Deegan I can't remember was it? no it wasn't it was uh, no read the centre because he lifted his leg you're probably culpable and, and they didn't place him down he kind of threw him uh, just as Pierre Schumann hit as well so um, yeah I think the referee got that one right um, sorry going back going back, going back to, to air, air Melrose I, I was going to ask you whether there's any tackle. border bias kicking in nah. but it's more likely to kick in the other way isn't it so. <laughs> for Gala Melrose man uh, I just thought it was a decent tackle I don't think it was above horizontal but I did, deliberately didn't look at the second time so I could be wrong but credit to, to air the kick to the corner they kept the discipline they threw got a really uh, decent mall set up and they go through the final. So 6th of April is the Tennis Premiership final at Melbury and it's Ayr versus Heritage this year. As promised, we're joined by Grant Gilchrist straight off the training field, big fella. Was it a good session? Yeah, no, it was good. Um, it's good to be here. Nice to see you both. It's nice, um, nice to have you. Oh, thank you. Um, no, Monday, boys have played played a hard game Friday night, so we're... Um, Mostly recovery for most of the guys, a bit, of, a bit of con games, and then walk through a few of our plays. Nothing too strenuous, and then we'll get a, a bit of hard graft tomorrow. Good. Uh, we've covered it already, but the result on Friday exactly what we won. Five points at home against the league leaders and sets this week up pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Not not pretty in the eye, not perfect <laughs> in any way, but um, yeah, points at this stage of the season, we know where we're at in the league. Um, I think Cocker said that four cup finals, mm-hmm. um, and that's the way we have to we have to win it, and we have to get as many points as possible. Um, I thought we controlled the game pretty well, especially the second half. Um, like I said, not not pretty, but it doesn't need to be if you can control the ball and put teams under pressure, and then they concede penalties, and we won the game. So happy days. Your four cup finals mentality does that help this week? Because well, ultimately, it is, isn't it? It's knockout rugby. So I mean, if you're flipping between, you know, league. What, you know, campaign and, and whatever, but if it is actually do or die every time you take the field, that that I think should be a good thing in, in, in terms of what's what's facing Saturday. Yeah, well, I think last weekend was probably a good starter to that because yeah. we we needed to win last weekend. You, you look at the results, kind of went away a little bit, but if if we hadn't picked up any points last weekend, we'd be we'd be struggling. So that was a, a good starting point, and I think, like you said, mindset wise, now we we know because of the situation we're in this weekend. Is, is a little bit different because you know you get the excitement over over the quarter final and you know we're buzzing to get back out there in front of hopefully a record crowd and um, yeah but like you say the good thing about it is there's not going to be a big high this weekend and a drop off because mm-hmm. Scarlet's the week after is mm-hmm. just as big but it, it, you needed the win from a league point of view to to push up but it also makes this week easier it means you guys are coming back in on a Monday feeling good about yourself you know um, working on positives not not working on negatives yeah definitely um, there was plenty of stuff plenty of good things at the weekend and, and then, like I say there was some work ons but it's always easier to come in the body's always a little bit less sore if, if you've picked up a win on the Friday night and got the five points and it sets us into a, a, a huge week and you know boys are excited to get out there today 
um, with the thought of, of what's to come on Saturday it's, it's, it's a great time to be at the club so the first thing the first thing the players need to concentrate on is, is selection it's getting that jersey there's only going to be clearly only going to be 15 starting jerseys handed out does that add a little bit to, to training in weeks like this? Yeah, well, I think I think tomorrow will be a bit tasty. We always it's always uh, contest Tuesday. Always a bit, that, yeah, there's a, there's always a bit of a test match Tuesday, so <laughs> I, I, I assume that'll be especially spicy this week. But I that, still remember you blindsiding me in test oh, match Tuesday. Stop it! Oh, no, stop no, it. Horrible, that doesn't horrible. sound like me. Yeah, it was him. Definitely. Uh, you were an easy target. You were <laughs> bent double at the an time. Old, <laughs> He always goes on about that. He's always on about uh, these scraps uh, at training. But, uh, it's, all, it's all the young fellas coming through. And cl- you were all right out the back, just like, kicking goals yeah, and you just know. keeping it away. <laughs> Five wins in the bounce in Europe. You know, if look back to um, to the pool we were in. Obviously, faced Montpellier, Toulon, Newcastle, um, and right away, you know, Richard Cockrell said that this was about us having an opportunity to, as Edinburgh to have a, an opportunity to play these big sides. We'll see where it takes us, but I think we all know deep down there was more to it than that. And Tremendous to, to qualify at that pool. Lost away 21 15 in the first game against Montpellier, which was a, a difficult loss because it was one you really should have won as well. And then five wins on the bounce. Toulon, Newcastle home and away, Toulon away, Montpellier at home. It's a, it's a crack and run going into this weekend. Yeah, I, th- I think the Montpellier game, although we didn't win it, we took yeah. a lot from it. Yeah. Um, because, like you say, we were the better side and we actually played better than we played in some of the other games. Um, but I think on the back of that, there was a real belief that you know we've went to Montpellier, the, they're a big French side, you know, um, and we should have. We felt really disappointed we didn't come away with a win, but I think we took a lot of belief into the next week. You know, we brought Toulon here, yeah. and there was always going to be that little dip in the foot. It had been a few years since we'd been at this level, and you know, for a lot of guys, they hadn't played in the Champions Cup, so it was, it was that first game, and we should have won it, and we watched it back, and it was horrible. We watched in the review, you know. We we scored two or three sitters or, or tries at, out in Montpellier, and then um, does that make it easier looking ahead because you can see where you went wrong? Like sometimes if you lose a game and you're, like, I'm not sure what, what what we need to do to win next week. But actually, the, the obvious thing the one or two try scoring opportunities back in that game that were quite obvious. If you get them right, it actually gives you a lot of confidence, so you know what to put right. So that would have helped. Yeah. It was 40, 40 points to 14, you beat Toulon out there, and the, the execution that day was incredible. Yeah, I, th- I think it, it led on from that. We, we learned a lot of lessons in that Montpellier game that stood us in the league games. Look, Looking at that game, it was probably a little turning point for us mm-hmm. that we'd, we'd not really hit our straps, and then we played actually probably our best game, but lost, and, yeah. then, and tidied up a few things, and then... I think we went on a run of eight games yeah, after included that, the, uh, including 1872. the 1872 and a couple of games in, else in the league. So we went on a good run following that game. I think it was just some clear lessons that came out and a belief that mm-hmm. you know we're back at, at the top table and we're more than good enough. It's amazing when you, you look back and reflect on this season when there will be you know a moment in a game that stands out as that uh, something's turned on that and we've taken that momentum forward. One thing you have done by performing so well in the group stage is you earned the right to be here. You earned the right to be home quarter final at, at BT Murrayfield. There's over 32,000 tickets already sold, but you want to pack this place with as many Edinburgh fans as possible, give you that real home advantage. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to play in the last quarter final here, and it's something that I, that I always remember, even at the end of my career. It was a, a really special day. You used to, you know, you've played in here in test matches, and it's always such a special atmosphere. Um, but to play in here week in week out with Edinburgh, where you know the atmosphere can be good, but it's it's a half empty stadium, and to have the Edinburgh jersey on and to look round at a, what felt like a full stadium, although you know there's still a few empty seats, it felt like a full yeah. stadium was was something really special. And I know the boys back then um, we took a huge buzz from when we actually got in the pitch because they're so used to playing with it half empty. That it's a point of difference, yeah. isn't it? It's when you run out that tunnel. And instead of there being six, seven, eight thousand here, there's, there's pushing forty thousand, and the noise will hit these yeah. guys. Now some of the, the guys they won't have played international matches here, so instantly it'll lift them up a level as well. Yeah, and I think that's why I'm excited for to, to experience that again with the boys that you have that you kind of train in day in day out with, and excited for the boys that that haven't had the chance to experience that. And um, yeah, you know, I'm sure if they're not looking forward to this game already, when they when they get here and start warming up, and start realizing that. It's going to be special on Saturday. You can add the Munster fans to that as well. Yep. You know, that famed for the the Red Army, for the the, the you know the, the away fans they bring. So, two times winners of the tournament as well. Um, so so that atmosphere will be added to even with 
you know the history and the, the culture and the support that they have so it is a, it's going to be well, it's a test match isn't it yeah. ultimately yeah. I mean you look at who you'll have on your side you look at who they'll have on their side you'd imagine it'll be Conor Murray and CJ Stander and Farrell I think Joey Carberry's training today he's been out since the Island game here actually we, we pulled hands from but he, he's likely to play so it, it's a test match Well she mentions Munster there have you, have you looked at them much so far this week and, and if so what do you expect them to bring? Um, I think well, you, you saw Munster probably a couple of years ago changing changing their stripes a little bit and playing a bit more and I think they're back to the the monster of old. Uh, you don't you don't need to do too much previewing. It's going to be a war out there. Roll your sleeves up, Bielko. It's it's going to be a battle. <laughs> it, and and you know the way we play, we're up for a battle. So that that's not really, um, a, a, yeah. So it's something that I think both teams will look to play at their strengths, and and both teams have pretty similar strengths. So um, it, it's guaranteed that it's going to be a physical game, and certainly. There might be a bit of tactical kicking and uh, <laughs> involved. <laughs> that was that was just, the backs might you know, get involved for five minutes. Is that um, what you're saying? But there certainly be one or two carries off nine, and <laughs> there'll definitely be a few big hits going in. Do you like that? Do you like the fact that you know they're coming straight at you? So you as a forward pack, the rest of your boys in that pack, you, you know what's coming. You've got a front up, obviously, but but you can then put your game and force your game, which is a similar game, onto them. Yeah, no, I think. It, it's uh, when you know that kind of the style of play that they're going to bring is is confrontational. It forces you to be confrontational, and it's something that we, when we're confrontational and physical, we're at our best. So you know, uh, we we believe we've got. A, a, I believe we've got a, a really good pack of forwards that can can compete with anybody in that style of game. So obviously, we'll be looking to add a bit of subtlety now and again. Um, yourself, you're going to put in some subtlety yourself. Uh, oh, well, you see. <laughs> Uh, probably not. I'll probably just <laughs> get the heat do, get the heat done and track it hard. But um, no, I, I, think, I, don't, I don't know about that, Gilco. Yeah. I, I, well, I've been in, inspired by how Edinburgh have played in Europe, and it, it is all built on that hard edge. But look at somebody try to score over yeah, Toulon. True, look at Darcy's true. finishing yeah. Toulon and Rambo's trying. Big Bill's offload. I mean, it's that to me is, is the strength of where Edinburgh are. The the non negotiable, the nuts and bolts, the physicality, the hard running, and the set piece we saw on Friday. You've got, and you know you're going to have to have that, that for right. Munster. But there's some pretty special touches in Europe yeah, so far, exactly. as well, isn't it? and that's that's the X factor that that hopefully, you know, if we get the edge up front and and give these guys a bit of space, a bit of time and space, then you know, Bill and Darcy and Duan and these kind of guys can go and win as the game. Yeah, that's that, a great that, point. Isn't that's, it? that's the way. That's that's our. I think that's our point of difference is that we can get on top of teams physically. Um, we can we can dominate them up front and, and get on top and set piece. Then we create opportunities to these guys. And in Europe, we've probably done it better than we've done it in the league, yeah. where where we've we've you've put away the chances that we've created. Yeah, it's, I suppose it is very easy to look back at what you guys have done and, and put it purely down to the foundations. But you don't go on the run that we talk about with eight eight games in a row without having the subtleties to your game or the ability to win the game at the bottom level but then have people like Bill Matter, like Hamish as well, yeah. adding in and, and getting the nice touches away. So I'm sure we'll see more of that the weekend. Here's one for you. Like, I've often thought, do you change, does anything change through the week because it's a big Heineken uh, Champions Cup knockout? Or is does your chain of thought... And I, I'm, I'm, it's a loaded I'm, question, isn't well, it? No, well, you I'm, get grumpy about this one. Well, no, no, not really. I mean, you, you hear so many chains of thought being that keep everything the same, it's just another game, just get on with it, you know? But then you think, actually... Here's a brilliant opportunity. It, it is a knockout fixture. So, so does anything change, or are you the the guy who just keep it keeps it the same every week? Um, I think, you know, we prepare in a similar way. Yeah. Like when there's not going to be, you know, a kind of throw everything away. You yeah. know, there's unnegotiables about the way we play. There's not negotiables about the way we train and prepare. Um, but I don't. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with putting a bit more Emphasis. pressure, a bit more pressure on on us to perform. And saying, you know, mm -hmm. we've worked hard to get here. Um, we're going to hopefully get a lot of our fans in here to to watch us. It's an opportunity, and and we should feel a bit of pressure about the fact that it's a quarter final and we, we want to go out there and perform. See, I agree. I agree because especially when you're playing a, a fellow Pro 14 team, like I think you have to make it different. I think you have to make it. Um, Unique. I remember when we played, we qualified in 2004 for the quarterfinal. We played the Ospreys, who were in the the, the league with us at the time, and, and we we made a, a conscious effort to make the the game in, in Europe against Ospreys different to the game in the league. Um, 
because it is, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity here in front of hopefully well as many thousand spectators as possible 45,000 40, 40, or something as many as possible, yeah, as many as possible. I, I, I agree with you Moshe I think the, the only danger is that when these big games come along that you forget that the, the the added pressure, the extra emphasis, will be there naturally. The yeah. players will feel it naturally. Mm-hmm. There's, there's more interest from from journalists. There's more interest from fans. Clearly, when we're talking about hopefully close to forty thousand fans coming mm-hmm. in here, so a lot of it comes in, comes in naturally. And mistakes that I've been involved in in the past is when we've tried to build it up too much internally, as well as these external factors, that you you end up yeah. getting carried away in it. Now, Alex Ferguson's got a quote about play, playing the game and not the occasion. Now. Concentrate on playing the game. Let the, let the motivating factors come in and push you forward, but don't get carried away in the occasion of the game. And that, from my, my own personal experience, I think that's key. I think I don't know which occasion you're thinking about. I'm thinking probably your Leinster away when you played for Glasgow in the first semi final. The first semi final. First final. The first, first final. Final. Played Leinster. Yeah. yeah. And maybe Glasgow's quarter final a couple years ago against Saracens, and those are both away games. So again, we come back to how. Important that home fixture is. Yeah, for for me it was it was the two finals. It was the Leinster one we got carried away. The second one we concentrated was Munster. The second uh, one concentrated uh, yeah. on that and and got got the performance right. Mm-hmm. No, but it's a balance tonight. But that's where you've got so much experience in your squad. Uh, more experience coming coming back with guys like John Barkley, with Matt Scott that we talked about. Richard Cockrell's been in these positions before as well. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I, I can't. There'll be a balance there. You know, I, I know you know with Cockers that. It's you know how he'll handle the week, and you know the, you know that the experience in the room won't won't let it go too far one way or too mm-hmm. far the other, and and you've just got to trust that that everybody will do their job, and we prepare. I think the key is that we we get training right the same way we try and get training right before we played Leinster last week, and if we do that and we train with a with an intensity and a, a train with a bit of extra bite through the week because of the size of the occasion, then then great. And if the guys who you know, there's going to be a lot. Of, I think those forty guys out there today. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of lot of boys that that are going to be itching to get in that team, and and if not, a bit disappointed. And, and if they're disappointed, then then hopefully they channel it well and and, and helping us prepare well and 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 um, making sure that the team that does is lucky enough to take the field on on Saturday represents the whole group and that everybody's put the put themselves forward uh, put their set, uh, efforts in the right direction to make sure that happens you played you said already in 2012 against Toulouse other than the the fans and the, the atmosphere have you any really strong vivid memories of, of that game that, uh, you, that you can use or, or pass on to other guys in order to prepare the ones who maybe haven't been in that that environment um, well, it was probably my first season. I was one of the young boys. Uh, Just coast it then. Easy. So, yeah. Easy so, it, it was. Uh, I thought that was the norm. <laughs> I, I thought. I thought oh, this is this is great. Heineken semi-finals. We'll get to the final next year. But here we are, seven years later. But um, you know, I, I think what I remember was I probably didn't say as much as as I will this this week. You know, I had I'd, I'd a different role. Was there somebody? Um, was there somebody back then that, that was performing the role that you will this weekend for you? Was there somebody who was maybe pointing in the right direction, putting your arm around your shoulder? Or? Uh, well, Cox, uh, Sean Cox was good for uh, me that yep. first season. He was an experienced pro and um, had played at, at the you know, professional level for a long time. And um, I played a lot of rugby with him in my mm-hmm. first season, which was good. You know, he, he was that older head. Um, which I probably am now, um, but I, something that I do remember was that the chunk man gave us <laughs> a r- r- gave us a rolling speech, and he never. I think it was the only time the whole season that he said in and before a game, and that got me that got me going. Just I can't I can't even remember what he said, but I just remember in the in the changing rooms, I'm I'm pulling yeah. the boys in and be like, boys, boys. We better, we better and, tell and everybody never, who the chunk is. I mean, everybody knows yeah. the chunk. Alan, Alan, the chunk Jacobson, he's, yeah. he's back this weekend as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I've ball. seen it. Yeah, that's good. That will get the puggy up, surely. <laughs> it's just it, things like that that it underlines again what it meant to somebody like that. Yeah. Like a local lad. And yeah. Yeah. I, I remember <laughs> he got punched in the nose and he's whether he'd lost a tooth or whether it was one of his ones that he's always missing, I don't know. It was the final whistle. His nose was bleeding, his mouth was bleeding. And he let out this massive big scream and it was captured on a a picture uh, so it was uh, I, don't, I don't think I used it in the paper right? but anyway two weeks later when we were going to, to we landed in uh, Dublin for the, the semi-final and we came out the the, the arrivals at uh, Dublin airport here's this I image on a massive that. big <laughs> backdrop it was just a chunk man's face with no teeth <laughs> nose bleeding screaming and I yeah. thought 
if you're not coming to Dublin for the, the semi-final, you're probably just going to turn the back in that plane. <laughs> you remember that? I do remember that. It was not on the re- like the retracting the doors. Or was <laughs> it, it was, it was on the doors. Right? Yeah, it was so the sliding, like doors. sliding doors are just taken away <laughs> and then bringing back his big face. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, Famed in Dublin. No, Richard Cockrell would have liked the chunk. You would have liked to coach the chunk, would you? Yeah, not? I think they would have gone well. No, no nonsense. That, I think that's all, like I said. I think it's the only time I ever heard him saying in before a game. You know, he's just get on with it, um, kind of guy, and I, he pulled the, I think he pulled everybody in and said something like I, said, I can't really remember exactly what he said. But he probably couldn't say it either. Yeah, either. probably couldn't. Yeah, there's <laughs> one or two expletives in there, but I remember thinking after he's ah, like, I was already buzzing, but then I was yeah. probably. Yeah. Grant, thank you very much for coming in. It's going to be a, a brilliant week for, for Edinburgh Rugby. Over 32,000 tickets sold already. We talked about how important it is for you guys to get as big a crowd as possible. 12.45 on Saturday, so as many as you can get down and support Grant and the rest of the Edinburgh guys. Yep, no. Passing our best to the lads, Grant. Go for six wins in Europe in a row, eh? Yep, we will do. No, thanks for having me, boys. Right, it was brilliant to have Grant Gilchrist from Edinburgh Rugby as we uh, look ahead to the massive European games for both Edinburgh and Glasgow this weekend. I'm now delighted to say that Xander Fagerson's joined us just fresh off a training field. Good afternoon, Xander. How's things? Uh, good, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I had a good day, so can't complain. A good day. A good night and uh, Saturday night as well with that, that victory against the Cheetahs. It's uh, good for you to be back on the field at Scotson. Um, a, f- a few months since you've played there, but also get back to winning ways and a, and a bonus point victory. Yeah, no, I think the boys did a really solid job when the, the internationals, the Six Nations was on, so um, it was great to continue that great, good vein of form and get a few boys back, and uh, yeah, a solid win at home was uh, was awesome, so yeah, it was great to be part of. And Xander, you bring the guys back in on, on a Monday, it was a Saturday game, so still be some sore bodies, was today about getting a bit of organisation, a bit of recovery done? Yeah, today was just a really good uh, day for review of the game and um, just tightening up those key things that we need to get right for this week. So um, it's a lot of clarity, you know, going through plays and stuff and just making sure, as, as a forward especially, just making sure our lineouts are spot on. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great day for learning, um, but not so hard on the, on the body. And how much, obviously looking ahead to Saracens this weekend, you've played them twice already. Uh, the only other time you qualified for the quarterfinals of the Champions Cup, it was Saracens again. So how much of that clarity... Um, is revising stuff that you've done already or is it a new plan a new approach to take on a, a familiar foe on, on, uh, on Saturday I think um, yeah, Saracens has been top of, the, top of uh, Europe and the Premiership for a, for a long time so you know you sort of know what they're going to get they haven't changed their st- style of play that much um, with a, a very abrasive forward pack they try to dominate you up front and then uh, a really strong backline as well so um, I think these, the two games that we played them already this season um, have shown us a lot of key areas we can attack um, but I think it, you're going to have to take it as a, as a, as a fresh game and just um, make sure you get our homework right and everyone knows their plays and uh, really have a go at them So looking at those games then Sanders without giving too much away um, is there anything in particular that you feel Glasgow need to improve on to go down there and, and get the result? I think um, I think both games have been very very physical. So I think um, against these big Premiership teams, if, if you can win the physical the physicality battle, um, that's probably the first step in get, getting a win. So um, yeah, I think this weekend we need to go down that and uh, make a statement, especially in the first half. It's kind of obviously uh, runner up in Pool Three, so qualified. Uh, obviously the two losses were Saracens at home, which was a, was a niggly old encounter <laughs> up at Scotson first up, and then the. The, the round six defeat down there 38-19 I think you'll probably take more um, in terms of the, the physicality from the first game but in terms of attack from the second game the last one down there scored some cracking tries and, and made Saracens kind of famed strong defence look vulnerable so there's loads of confidence as well you can take from that in terms of the physicality and also the, the attack but putting that together in 180 minutes is the focus isn't it? Yeah, massively. You know, I think, I think that second game, uh, yeah, it was extremely loose um, with, with, from both teams. So yeah. yeah, so I think it definitely showed that they are vulnerable in some areas, and we just need to tighten up a few, a few defensive stuff. So yeah. And will the yeah, niggle, was, con- will the niggle continue? Do you think? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, look ahead to the weekend. We expect a, a big travel and support down there as always. The Glasgow fans can make themselves known to you uh, and really lift you boys down at Alliance Park. Yeah, I was lucky enough to play down there last time um, when we were in the quarterfinal, and uh, it, it was awesome. You know, I think, I think our, 
our, our supporters were, were louder than theirs. So I'm um, hoping, hoping for the same again if selected. And um, yeah, really looking forward. And I think it will be a great day for the club. On that that game two years ago, wasn't it the quarter final? It was um, it was thirty eight thirteen. I think you came out uh, on the wrong side that day. But similar to what we spoke about with, with Grant uh, Gilchrist before, was like you played in that game. There's lots of other players who will be playing played in that game. The first one is obviously the most difficult, I believe, in the quarter final. But having that experience only two years ago, and we spoke about in, in the studio maybe that sometimes you play the occasion more than the game. Do you think that that game two years ago will will serve a purpose of actually? Preparing those who did play for a, a more sort of a calmer, uh, more I suppose better executed game plan this week round. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think definitely um, that year we uh, had we had, a, we had a really good um, pool stages, and I think yeah. we just didn't do our, didn't do ourselves justice in that game. And I, I know at the end of that season, you know, we, we were pretty gutted in how, how we finished that um, in the end of the tournament. So to be in that position again, yeah, um, I think we really need to take take that opportunity and. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be exciting. I think that last game gave us give us a lot of excitement on how we how we can break them down in attack and if we can just tighten up our D, you know, it, it's gonna be an exciting game. Let's talk scrummaging very briefly, Xander. Clearly, uh, an area close to your heart. Um, how many how much of the lessons from the previous two games can you take into this game and in particular what threat to the Saracens bring at the scrum team? Um, yeah, no. So I think from from the last two games, you know, I, I'd um, it's, it's been it's been quite a, a closely contested battle so um, it's always a, they've got a very big abrasive pack you know and I think Vincent Cox a really, a really solid tight head and of course he's got Will Skelton behind him so that's a lot of weight so yeah it's, it's going it's to be an interesting battle um, I think from looking from the last two games you know they're very I'm not going to bore you too much with too much detail but they like to really attack through the tight head and then bring bring, bring the loose head up so um, Vincent Cock tries to split the seam between the hooker and the loose head so um, if you can null, nullify that he, he gets in quite quite bad shape and comes in the hole and of course uh, fingers crossed we can uh, aim up there so yeah we'll see what happens you're not going to bore me uh, Xander but I've just had to wake up Mossy have you got <laughs> no, I've got <laughs> a, a, I'm all over that the, the other way the, the other way of looking at it is you've got a guy in your camp Petrus Duplessis who played with all these guys even as early as yeah. the start of the season who who I know does a lot of work with your scrum so you'll be picking his brain as well eh? yeah he's been absolutely awesome since he's come in you know um, really giving us breath of fresh air in that department and um, his technical input second to none so yeah I, I'm not going to give too much away but he's uh, yeah he's definitely uh, giving us some insight Yeah, it was Xander Fagerson to uh, join us straight after training. It, it, it's great of these players, you know, both Grant and Xander, to, to join us. A couple of old guys on a Monday afternoon, <laughs> bail us out when the rest of our podcast teams uh, seem to holidays, be in holiday. Everybody's away sunning themselves. But think, oh, it's, it's, it's a great insight, isn't it? It really? is, it's great. And it's great of them to give their time. And also, I think, you know, we've wished them luck individually, but especially for um, for the two teams, Glasgow and Edinburgh, best of luck from us. Two massive challenges, Edinburgh at home to Munster and obviously Glasgow away to Saracens. But you can hear the technical input from Xander there. They're prepared for this match. And they'll learn from the quarterfinals two years ago about, uh, you know, not making it too big a deal, just really focusing on, on, on the detail that has to be done, making it, um, you know, almost a... A special feeling that you're away from home and you have to go to the Lions Den effectively and come out on top. And uh, let's hope both teams can. I believe both teams can. Um, yeah, I do have Absolutely. the ability, do have the, the depth, do have the support behind them. Um, and if they did win, they would both be back here in a semi final. How special would that would be? be it was a great weekend for Scottish rugby already with two teams in the quarter final. Imagine we're coming back here in a few weeks' time looking ahead to uh, Edinburgh Glasgow semi final, European semi final here. We need to extend the place, I think. <laughs> <We would. laughs> nah, good luck to both teams. Brilliant uh, to see them progress, but um, we want to see them progress further. Absolutely. Well, Mossy, we've, we've got to the end. We've got to the end just the two. Well, we should say a, a big thank you to Rudy because Rudy's not run off and, and left us. He's been here pressing the buttons, making sure we don't mess up too much but we've stumbled our way through yeah we've basically sat and spoke and Rudy's done all the technical hard work so <laughs> although we're patting ourselves in the back we, uh, hopefully we made it by but yeah Jamie's uh, in Australia uh, and Lindy's in Sweden in okay. Sweden yeah. yeah hopefully we've brought some insight well two great guests as we said earlier on uh, and they came on and, and helped us out saved as well. us, it's, saved been, us. it's been good fun but for now all is to say goodbye I hope you enjoy the podcast best of luck to Edinburgh and to Glasgow and the big quarter final matches this weekend so from me and from yeah that would be me <laughs> <laughs> see you later bye bye